election. It's a 6-3 decision. The left is going to go crazy. I mean, you know, the left is the left. We're not dealing with a normal country anymore. When people are, like, ready to impeach a Supreme Court justice because they don't align with their political ideology yep. as the institutions in our country are being torn down day by day. I can feel people absolutely losing it over this one. And folks, before we start the show, hit the like button on the video, the follow button on the channel, the sub button if we're over on YouTube. Share the show with a friend, take the URL, post your social medias. And if you'd like to help contribute to our efforts over here at AP Unfiltered and you get some perks in the meantime, hit the join button there over on YouTube for $5 a month. You support an alternative media and our messaging that we're trying to get out here. Let's get into the video. From the Daily Wire, Supreme Court rules Trump has immunity for official acts, likely delays trial past the election. Now, this is big, folks, the fact that we're going to be delaying this trial past the election, given everything that's happened already. The Supreme Court issued a ruling on Monday that Donald Trump's claim of presidential immunity to shield himself from federal prosecution is valid for official acts, but not for unofficial conduct in a partial victory for the former president. Justices voted 6-3 along ideological lines in the de decision that set the case in which Trump pleaded not guilty to charges accused accusing him of unlawfully plotting to overturn the results of the 2020 election back to a lower D.C. court for further review. Quote, the president is not above the law, the ruling says, but under our system of separated powers, the president may not be prosecuted for exercising his core constitutional powers, and he is entitled to at least presumptive immunity from prosecution for his official acts. Because the ruling was released so late on the final day of the term, the Associated Press noted the justices, quote, reduced or, quote, eliminated the chances of a trial being held before the November election. And the case may already be weakened by a prior ruling that found the Justice Department went too far with January 6th related obstruction charges. Well, it seems like the left is in full-blown panic mode after the Supreme Court made the ruling the other day. This was a huge win for the Trump camp. I think the Daily Wire article actually undersold it a little bit. And it seems like Trump is just claiming victory after victory after victory in the month of June and now heading into the month of July. Because if you think about it, everything that the Democrats have thrown at him has actually just made him a stronger candidate in his campaign more strong. I know it's hard for people to admit this. They don't want to admit this. But if you look at the cold, hard facts of this, this is what you get. The conviction led to the single biggest fundraising day, I believe, in the history of any presidential candidate. I could be wrong. The jump in the polls across the board and then the absolute disaster, which was the debate in which the American people finally saw the truth that we have all been saying for a very, very long time. It was undeniable. And now the cherry on top of it is the Supreme Court's ruling. Democrats are not very happy. In fact, they've taken us to the airwaves and to social media accounts to express their concerns. And this is what that looked like. They're obviously more concerned about the latter. And so I think politically, it's bad. It makes the Supreme Court look very partisan. Uh, they're supposed to be wearing these kind of black and white uh, umpire jerseys or whatever. They look like they're wearing red jerseys uh, for, uh, or even MAGA hats. It's going to go down bad politically for the Supreme Court. But it's also scary because what is Trump going to do? If Trump gets elected and there's this idea that he can get away with even more stuff, that's really, really scary for the public because he already <laughs> ran over every norm that he could. So it seems like, I mean, just, I'm just looking at this politically, not legally, politically, it's almost like a license to thug in a way. Like... You can do whatever you want, and the Supreme Court is probably going to let you get away with it. That is very frightening. I love, by the way, how he uses that language, calling, calling it a license to thug, because I was informed that that term is racist. I find this all absolutely rich coming from people, especially like Van Jones, the person who was just witnessed utterly crying after the Biden dismantling at the debate, trying to say, that the American people are scared of Trump because he's going to upend every normal thing and run over them. You kind of mean like what's been happening for the last four years under Joe Biden and the Biden administration? That's all the Democrats have done. Weaponized the justice system, gone after the political opponents, attached terrorism enhancement charges to people who didn't even breach the Capitol on January 6th and were unaware of what was a restricted zone or not. And the list goes on, ladies and gentlemen. Don't get fooled by this. Don't fall for this language. Don't fall for this fear-mongering and baiting. So don't come crying to me about how you're scared of Donald Trump, Van Jones. What are you going to do in four years? Really, ask yourself this. He was already president. A lot of people forget this. 
What are you going to do in four years after he wins, which I believe he will, and then he leaves office and life goes on and nothing happens. People aren't put into camps. All of this stuff doesn't happen that you guys have been trying to tell the people for, I don't know, the last eight, nine years now at this point. If that happens, these people should never work again. If, if, if all of their predictions that have riled people up into such an absolute frenzy, thinking there's a threat to democracy, that our world's going to freaking end, that the country's going to fall apart, if the big, bad, orange Hitlerian figure gets back in, they should be publicly condemned and left to live on an island somewhere away from society because that is a tremendous disservice that has just continued to tear at the fabric of our society. And it's perpetrated almost exclusively from people such as Van Jones and the ilk of his kind. People forget, like I said, that Donald Trump was already president for four years and none of this happened. The reason that they're scared, and this is the point, the reason that they're scared is because they, the Democrats, broke all the precedents. They broke all the rules. And now they're like, if Donald Trump gets back in, he's just going to do what we've been doing this entire time. That's what it is. That is what it is, folks. Bottom line. So it's about building coalitions, but at the end of the day, it's about a choice about what kind of America you want to live in. And Joe Biden has, has, has kind of painted a picture of what the future of America can look like that includes everybody, that actually builds things from the bottom up and the middle out. Donald Trump continues to talk about revenge. He continues to talk about giving tax breaks to the rich. He continues to talk about trying to find a way to find immunity, if you can, for him to order seal, SEAL Team 6 to kill political opponents. That ought to freeze everybody. This guy literally got on TV and said he thinks Do that Donald Trump should send SEAL, is going to send SEAL Team 6 after his opponents. He's going to try to find a way to do that. What world are you living in? What world are you living in? Either you are being willfully dishonest and trying to manipulate voters, or you're an idiot. It's one or the other. Meanwhile, you have online influencers like Harry Sisson claiming the Democrats should use SEAL Team 6. What's with them and SEAL Team 6? From the Twitter account of Harry Sisson, according to the Supreme Court, Biden could now send in SEAL Team 6 to take all of them out. He could send in the military to take out Trump. He has immunity for official acts now. I'm just saying, theoretically... Could you imagine if people were posting that about Biden? I don't know. What would happen there? You would have Maxine Waters and people like her, these other fear baiters, which I'm coining that term because it's so appropriate. They're just fear baiting people. Wall to wall media coverage claim that there's a rise in domestic terrorism and so on. Now, to be clear, do I actually think Harry Sisson called for the assassination of Donald Trump? No, because I have a functioning prefrontal cortex. Do I think the Democrats are absolutely panicking? 100%. And now, meanwhile, you have Joe Biden over here trying to give an address on the ruling. And this time he does have a teleprompter in front of him. But even with the teleprompter, he was only able to last about five minutes. And you would think that on an issue such as this, because that's all he's been screaming about is January 6th, January 6th, January 6th, January 6th, January 6th, over and over and over again. He would have a little bit more to speak about than just for five minutes. But as we all know, and we saw at the debate, Biden is not with us. So now... Now the American people have to do what the courts should have been willing to do, but will not. The American people have to render a judgment about Donald Trump's behavior. The American people must decide whether Donald Trump's assault on our democracy on January 6 makes him unfit for public office in the highest office in the land. The American people must decide if Trump's embrace of violence to preserve his power is acceptable. Perhaps most importantly, the American people must decide. They want to entrust the president once again, the presidency, to Donald Trump, now knowing he'll be more emboldened to do whatever he pleases whenever he wants to do it. All right, I'm going to go down on a limb here and say this. He's been saying this message over and over and over again, and especially after the debate, because you see his effectiveness at communicating that message has waned drastically, and people's recept receptiveness to that messaging has also waned drastically, especially post all of the indictments and definitely post the conviction and 100% now after that debate because he's trying to tell people they have to pass judgment on Donald Trump. People have made up their mind on Donald Trump at this point. It's you, Mr. President Biden, who has to have judgment passed on you. That is where we are at now. And you can see here very clearly, he uses the time to fear monger about January 6th once again, all while also seemingly forgetting that he's the one who's been overriding a SCOTUS decision this entire time with the forgiving of student 
debt. Even though SCOTUS found that to be unconstitutional, Biden just went ahead and said, screw you, I'm gonna go ahead and try to buy my votes anyway. From Breitbart, Biden attempts to reframe election around January 6th in rushed White House speech. President Joe Biden used a Monday night White House press conference to attempt to reframe the November general election around Donald Trump's alleged actions on January 6, 2021. Biden's speech came in response to a U.S. Supreme Court ruling in favor of former President Donald Trump on Monday, holding a 6-3 decision that uh, presidents are covered by limited immunity from criminal prosecutions for actions taken while in office. The ruling is a significant blow to the de Biden Department of Justice's prosecution against Biden's political opponent, because it is exactly that. They're screaming about Trump going after their political opponents, but that's what they've been doing this entire time. And like I've been screaming and like I've been saying, they're just scared that that's going to happen to them now. They started it. You're going to reap what you sow in some way or another, and you can't avoid it, which Trump and his allies have characterized as politically motivated lawfare. 100% correct. Biden, despite reading from a teleprompter, repeatedly slurred his words at one point seemingly to mistakenly read end of quote in a shaky effort more notable for its delivery than content and what appeared to be a newly applied spray tan. Yeah, I noticed that. It was kind of weird. Now he's the orange man? I don't know. Despite the speech's brevity, Biden refused to answer questions from multiple reporters asking about his fitness for office and if he would step down from the ticket. Quote, only four years ago, my predecessor sent a violent mob to the U.S. Capitol to stop the peaceful transfer of power. No, he didn't. He said peacefully protest. Make your voices heard. Repeating the narrative Trump has refuted with evidence and that Speaker Nancy Pelosi get Trump January 6th committee apparently destroyed evidence to perpetrate. Biden continued apparently strained from the teleprompter, quote, but also with our own eyes. We sat there and watched it happen that day, he said. Attack on the police, I don't even know, the ransacking of the Capitol, a mob indiscernibly hunting down the Speaker Nancy Pelosi, gallows erected to hang Vi Vice President Mike Pence. I think it's fair to say one of the darkest days in American history. Undeterred by his stumbles, Biden pressed on saying, now the man who sent that mob to the U.S. Capitol is facing potential criminal conviction for what happened that day, and the American people deserve to have an answer in the courts before the upcoming election. I would beg to differ that the American people deserve to have an answer on, hey, what was the federal response to January 6th? Like, we're basically saying, like, what were the circumstances surrounding that that allowed that to happen when President Trump did call for 10 uh, he called for National uh, Guard to be there, and then Nancy Pelosi is caught on tape later freaking out about all this because she knows that, guess what? You should have had that. Tensions were very raised. Anybody with two brain cells to rub together could realize you needed security there. And the Democrats, in an attempt, in my opinion, and I think everybody could realize this, in an attempt, they were hoping this would happen because now they've been saying this, and I said it even on January 6th. I said to my wife, I turned to her and said, we just gave the left everything they could have ever hoped for and more. It's crazy that in that article, by the way, too, folks, they basically put the entire Biden address on a pretty significant topic, according to him, in one article because he only spoke for barely five minutes. Everybody's waking up to this fact that what we've been saying this entire time to be true is true. Biden is not with us. He is not on planet Earth, and he's definitely not fit to be the president of the United States by any stretch of the imagination. That being said, I hope he stays on the ticket. I don't want him taken off. I pray the Democrats keep him on the ticket. I really do. This is not the 2020 election. He cannot run a basement campaign. He has to be out in front of the American people. And when they did put him out in front of the American people with even seven days of debate prep and every single stipulation for that debate was written by the Biden administration, you got the result you got. He has not been with us for a while. It's not like he magically woke up on the day of the debate and was like, hey, everything's different now. Now I'm not on planet Earth. This is the exact same Biden for months now. And the people, the American people can clearly see it. And the and, and, and listen, on the back end of this, the reason why the left wing media is absolutely enraged with with Biden uh, was because he was not able to hold it together on debate night because now the media is viewed as liars and manipulators, which is very much true. And they are. But let's look at more of a breakdown of the January 6th decision by Jeanine Pirro. Well, she's wrong because this is a case that is based upon the Constitution and federal statutes where the court has said, look, when the president is engaging in issues that only he or she at some point uh, can engage in, constitutional authority, federal statutory authority that he shares with no one, that is per se an official act. And he has absolute uh, immunity from criminal prosecution. That does not mean that everything that a president does is an official act. Uh, 
um, they then are going to send this to a lower court to try to figure out what's an official versus unofficial act. Now, let's assume there's an official act that the lower court interprets. What is the immunity level there? Mm -hmm. The presumption is that when the president is engaging in an official act, which is probably most of the stuff he does during the day, the presumption is that he has immunity from prosecution, which is a rebuttable presumption, which the prosecution must then rebut. Okay, and if it is an unofficial act, then there is no presumption of, of uh, um, uh, immunity. And I think that it is a brilliant decision. It's a 6-3 decision. The left is going to go crazy. I mean, yep. you know, the left is the left. We're not dealing with a normal country anymore. When That's important. We're not, we, if you're going to address this, you have to look at it through the lens of we are not the same country that we used to be. The, the status quo has changed, and we have to live in reality. I talk to a lot of people about this when it comes to who are you going to vote for? How are you thinking about these things? You have to you have to come at it from this is the reality that we're in. This utopic idea that, oh, look how nice the debate was between Mitt Romney and Obama. Or look at – it's like that's not where we're at right now. That's not what – we're doing that's not as much as we'd love to go back to these utopic ideas of like how things used to be. I mean, I personally like to go back to the 50s and 60s, but guess what? We can't. We can't go back to that. That's not where we're at. We've crossed the threshold and it's been driven mostly by Democrats. I will also say that establishment Republicans have furthered that agenda. But nonetheless, you have to live in reality. When people are like ready to impeach a Supreme Court justice yeah, because AOC. they don't align <laughs> with their political ideology yep. as the institutions in our country are being torn down day by day by people out there who are arguing to people that, you know, this isn't right, this isn't the law. They don't know what the law is. They don't study the law. But I think that the, the most important part of all this is that you've got a prosecutor, Jack Smith, who has a terrible reputation in the Supreme Court. His cases have been reversed, unanimous decisions. I believe 8-0 in the Supreme Court. Terrible he a record. Political, uh, a guy who goes after political uh, prisoners. And what he did with the governor of Maryland, that case was, was reversed also. But this court made it clear the president enjoys no immunity for unofficial yeah. acts. And by the way, we had a president who sent drones over yes. to the Middle East to and kill killed American civilians. Citizens. American, American citizens. civilians. Uh, over. She's 100 percent right. Most Americans do not understand a damn thing about constitutional law or law in general. They really don't. So when something goes against what they feel, they have a complete freak out and the left preys on that and claims it's a threat to democracy. All while everything that they're doing is, a, is the real threat to democracy and the true threat to democracy. In fact, it's the pinnacle of irony in the most truly backwards and scary way. Not to mention, she brought up the Obama drone strikes. Yeah, some former presidents must be breathing a sigh of relief over this. The Obama administration and him specifically literally drone striked an American citizen overseas. A young boy is the first person that comes to mind in this regard. Abdul Rahman Anwar Alalaki, an American citizen who was struck by a drone under the Biden administration. Okay? And as far as I know, there's no statute of limitations on murder. And folks, to close this out, that's why we have been spending the time breaking these things down and talking to our friends and family members and neighbors, waking them up to what is actually going on. And that's my little plea for you and push there at the end. Take some time out of your day. Get involved somehow. Scott Pressler has an amazing app. It's called Early Vote Action. Get involved. Change people's minds. Wake people up to the reality of what is going on on the ground. But listen, folks, that's all I got for you today. If you appreciate this type of content and you want to see more like it, hit the like button on the video, the follow button on the channel, the sub button if you're over on YouTube, share the show with a friend. You hit that join button right next to subscribe, or it's in the link in the description of the video for $5 a month. You can support alternative media and our efforts here and continue to help us bring these videos and keep the lights on around here. But until next time, staying informed is an American immoral obligation, and I'll catch you on the next one.